Um, most institutions will have a, uh, a similar set of medications within their crash carts. Um, the location of them may differ among institutions, but one of our one of the mainly utilized medications during codes would be epinephrine, which is adrenaline. Um, it's used in cases of uh, rhythms such as PEA, pulseless electrical activity, as well as ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. Um, typically, we use this medication every three to five minutes during a code. Um, I think in the future there's going to be more evidence with regards to the optimal dosing of epinephrine. And it's interesting to note that there was actually a recent study that showed um, better outcomes for patients who received epinephrine faster. So I think more information has to come on this with, with regards to optimal dosing, et cetera. Um, but as of right now, epinephrine is pretty much the main medication we use in most cases. Um, another main medication we utilize is called amiodarone. Um, for that, we use it in certain cases such as ventricular tachycardias and ventricular fibrillation. Um, typically, we give it as a bolus dose uh, up front in those cases with the option to redose under circumstances as well, too. Um, then we have other medications as well. Uh, atropine is another one. So patients who have bradycardia, a slow heart rate, we can give uh, 0.5 milligram doses uh, several times to increase their heart rate. Other medications that are maybe not normally administered during a code, uh, but are accessible to us during, circum during certain circumstances may include calcium. Uh, we would use calcium uh, to ultimately stale, stabilize the myocardium and get someone out of a lethal rhythm if we think they might either be hypokalemic or hyperkalemic, low body serum potassium or high serum potassium. Another medication as well too, sodium bicarbonate, um, once again is not a routine medication given as part of the advanced cardiac life support, uh, but in cases where we think someone might be uh, acidotic, especially in metabolic acidosis, we can give this medication to bring their uh, serum pH up and possibly prevent them from coding further. Other aspects, uh, we have, most institutions will have uh, vasopressor support in terms of typically dopamine um, in the crash carts, filled as premixed bags that can be easily opened up and started to help someone's blood pressure. And other institutions will have uh, norepinephrine, another vasopressor, as well as vials of epinephrine as well too. So, um, and last, we might have some antidotes as well too. Sometimes uh, naloxone, if we suspect that someone may be uh, either overdosed on uh, opioids, such as oxycodone, oxycontin, uh, maybe before coming into the hospital system, or else maybe in the case where a patient uh, might have received uh, a little bit too much, maybe the patient's really sensitive to the dose of, um, of the opioid that we gave them in the hospital, we can easily reverse that with some agents that we have. Another antidote we would have too is possibly flumazenil. It's not used very often because of possible concerns with uh, causing seizures, especially for those patients who have been on a medication type called benzodiazepines, which include diazepam or um, lorazepam for long periods of time.